In our most recent issue of Woodsmith Magazine, we talked about choosing and using different types of waxes in your shop. Now, wax in the shop is not a new concept. In fact, it's one of the oldest finishes known. And the same type of wax that was used back then is the same wax that I'm reaching for most of the time, and that's beeswax. Now, like the name implies, beeswax is a wax that's made by honeybees for use in their hives. This means that it's usually available locally from local beekeepers. You can also order it online. Now, I keep bees myself, so I have a pretty steady supply, but if you do ever have to buy wax, or if I ever have to buy wax, there's one thing that I really look for, and that's the hardness of the wax that I'm purchasing. Wax that's in its raw or first refined form is usually pretty soft and tacky. That's like this one right here. But wax that's been hardened or had a lot of the sugars dissolved out of it is much harder. You can see that by when I stick the screw in here, this is much softer than this hardened one. Now the soft wax is great for mixing into a finish. Like I said, there's still sugar crystals, which is honey crystals inside the wax. This gives it a really pleasant smell when you mix it in with a finish. However, I do like also to use beeswax as a lubricant in my shop, and a tacky soft wax is counterproductive. So if I ever buy soft wax, I usually take that and I put it into a pot of boiling water and let it remelt. This brings all the sugar down to the bottom and it dissolves in the water. Then once it's cooled, it'll be a nice hard wax that you can use for other lubrication tasks. Now, mineral oil is often used as a food safe finish, but by adding a little bit of beeswax into that mixture, you're adding a little bit of water resistance and you're also adding a nice warm glow. The beeswax really repels water, so items that, like cutting boards or spoons that get washed, it's a perfect application. Now, when I'm gonna apply a beeswax and mineral oil mixture, I like to start off by reheating it in a double boiler. The double boiler really brings that up to a liquid state and makes it a little bit easier to get it on to your project. Then, I like to take a cloth that I'm gonna apply it with, and I fold that multiple times. And what I'm looking for is a little bit of bulk in the cloth. This is really gonna soak up the finish and it's gonna hold the heat and keep it in a liquid state as you're applying it. Then when I go to apply it, I like to dip it in the mixture and hold it in there for a few seconds. That's gonna allow the cloth to heat up and really soak up that mixture and it'll hold it in a liquid state a little longer. And then this simply gets applied to the project. And you might notice the finish drying or cooling as you're applying it, but that's all right. Just re-dunk the, the cloth, heat it up, and apply more. Now, once you have the finish applied on the entire project, you might notice that it looks a little thick and it's a little tacky. This is where I'll usually grab a heat gun, or if my wife's not home, I'll stick it in the oven. About 150, 175 degrees for a few minutes will keep that in a liquid state and really allow the wood fibers to soak it up. Now there's a few other ways you can use beeswax as a finish. One of those is melting it into a tongue oil or a linseed oil. This creates a really nice soft finish that was popularized by chairmaker Sam Maloof. It lends a really nice hand rubbed look when it's applied on top of another film finish like a varnish. There's a lot of different wax blends that are available on the marketplace. Stuff ranging from Johnson's Paste Wax clear to Renaissance Wax. But one of them that's really been my favorite recently is a product called Alfie Shine. And Alfie Shine was developed by a tool collector out of the UK by the name of Jim Hendricks. And when Jim was developing this, he was basing it on a 16th century recipe that's a blend of different ingredients. I'm not gonna really get into those, but it's basically a frankincense that's carried with beeswax and then has other added essential oils into it. And the cool thing is the resins in the frankincense really give it a nice protective finish to whatever you apply it and the essential oils are nourishing. So when I use it, I'm using it on antique hand planes or little tools I'm making. And what it does is it really nourishes the wood but it also adds a really nice protective sheen to it. The application is pretty simple. And I like to use a clean soft cloth and work it out of the tin. Now it's pretty hard, so you're gonna have to work at it a little bit to get your cloth loaded up, but once you have it, 
then it's just as simple as rubbing it and buffing it in to the wood. And what you'll notice is where you're buffing, this is going to have a nice shine that's going to really harden into a nice protective finish. And the nice thing about Alfie Shine is there's no artificial dryer. So after waiting a few days, you can add another layer and those resins really build upon each other. Plus, this might be the only time that you hear a woodworker say, I wish we had smell o vision because the smell of this from the frankincense is fantastic. So next time you're looking for a nice, beautiful finish on your project, maybe reach for some beeswax and some oil. You will not be disappointed.